Hello my dear students. Welcome to yet another class of appreciating poetry. Today we are going to learn about a poem by Austro-German poet Rainer Maria Rilke and his childhood. How was your childhood? Just think about that. We are going to see the unhappy childhood of the poet. What are the features of his poetry? He uses images, he uses symbols in his poetry. We can see the image of rain, shepherd in his poem. Let's learn more. Reina Maria Rilke Rilke was born in 1875. He was an Austro-German poet and he won worldwide recognition as a poet and philosopher. He was the only child of German-speaking parents in Prague. Prague in Central Europe. He had an unhappy childhood. Why? His father had compelled him to attend a military boarding academy to become an officer. He was very sensitive and he found it was very much demanding and because he had a poor health he left school prematurely and it affected his education so his childhood was not filled with happiness further affected his education and affected his mental health was his parents divorced later he matriculated from charles university in 1895 and he enrolled for courses in german literature and art history rilke's first collection of poetry appeared in 1894 this reinforced his conviction that conviction that he was destined to be a writer he also trotted across european continent and he got to meet Lo Andreas Salome in Venice in 1897 and the affair with this girl was a decisive influence in his life. In 1899 he visited Russia with Salome and he calls Russia as a spiritual fatherland. So Russia influenced him a lot. The life in Russia, the people in Russia and he met Tolstoy there, the famous Russian author, the author of Anna Karenina. These were the formative moments of he adheres to existential materialism and he perceived art as religion. He was into the philosophy to take art as religion or to embrace art as religion and he was into the philosophy of existential materialism giving more importance to yourself individual is responsible for giving meaning to life nothing more than that and it centers on the lived experience of a person be yourself that is more important and they were against the idea of metaphysical realm or they contributed they were interested in the material things not into the metaphysical realm of abstract ideas we have learned about metaphysical and they were not into the metaphysical realm of abstract ideas of uh, uh, what emotions and all they were more into materialistic ideas they adhere materialist philosophy giving more importance to matter uh, physical things and he was inspired by Nietzsche and who was Nietzsche? He was a German philosopher and he says that human beings should craft identity through self-realization without relying on religion or without relying on God or soul. Widely recognized as one of the most lyrically intense German language poets. He was born in the year 1875. He was unique in his efforts and he expanded the realm of poetry through new uses of syntax and imagery. We can see his poems 
arrest with the majories he embraced the aesthetic philosophy of beauty he rejected christian pursuits and he strove to reconcile beauty and suffering life death cm bowra in his work reina maria relk aspects of his mind and poetry said for him art was mo- what mattered most in life relk was sensitive and introspective his style was varying from simple to the elaborate and profound we can see deep thoughts in his poems poem is so small but it conveys deep thought it is generally characterized by striking visual imagery musicality he wrote against spiritual love between men and women as a constant theme in his work in tone his verses are often mystical and prophetic he used symbolism as a means of expression that means he uses symbols be it words or people or locations or abstract ideas ideas to represent something beyond the literal meaning for example in the poem the black cat narrator describes the behavior uh, of a mad man who is incapable of controlling himself the man runs through night in night in through darkness and the night or darkness is used as a symbol to suggest his mental anguish so symbols his use of symbols imagery all these things are features of his poetry and it has his poetry has a resemblance to medieval verse too and this resemblance reflects in his religious outlook he was probing into searching into the emotional and spiritual issues involved in the search for goodness he found the absorption with death as a poetic theme he was anti modern in many ways he had an antipathy towards large modern cities his most popular poetry collections were stories of god and the story of the love and death of con christof rilke that it remained the poet's most widely recognized book during his lifetime now the critic george c schoolfield called his first poetry collection life and songs is unbearably sentimental his life was not so happy and the work demonstrates his immaturity satiric gift insight into human relations so towards his matured poems when he moved ahead we can see his poems are really matured and which gives deep thoughts his some tales are autobiographical too such as pierre de mont and evolved tragi pierre de mont features a young boy saying goodbye to his mother at the gates to a military school and a wall tragedy that is a two part story about a boy who leaves his family um and he fights loneliness but enjoys a new sense of freedom when he leaves his hometown prague for munich he met tolstoy in russia and in 1899 uh, he made the first two of his uh, two pivotal trips to russia and uh, he saw russia as a spiritual fatherland and work during this period featured traditional christian imageries and concepts but he presented but he embraced art as the sole redeemer of humanity religion cannot redeem humanity only the art can redeem humanity book of hours is another famous work comprising the three books of the monastic life of pilgrimage of poverty and death consists of a series of prayers about the search for god whenever he writes about god he uses the term to refer to the life force or nature or an all embodying pantheistic consciousness pantheism is a doctrine that the universe conceived of as a whole is god universe is god and there is no god like a single figure 
but the combined substance forces and laws that are manifested in the existing universe that is what he considered um, about the concept of god the real theme of the book of hours is the poet's own inner life his struggle towards comprehension and about all his perils as a poet the second major concept in the book of hours is rilke's apotheosis that is he was elevating the status of art to a div- to a divinity he is giving a divine status to art and he was saying that religion is the art of those who are uncreative those who are in the religion um they are uncreative he was against religions maybe because of his background because of his traumas in his life the book of hours was also another of the poet's most popular works second only to the story of the love and death of conrad christof rilke during his lifetime and more importantly when he, when we come to his verses we can see his verses are objective but his objective verses evolved from an impressionistic vision evolved from impressionistic vision impressionism it basically defined as when an author centers a story on the mental life of the character speaking about uh, his impressions feelings and sensations and emotions not to interpret the feelings and sensations but just showcasing impressions and feelings just like virginia wolf and all they were uh, practicing this and his verses became objective and it evolves from that impressionistic vision that's uh, feeling sensations and emotions of poet and he represented his personal impressionistic vision with symbolism with the usage of symbols and he projected it as objective we found it is a, it as objective but it evolved from his own personal feelings and sensations and he mixed it with symbolism and he referred to this type of poetry as ding dishi that is thing poems his feelings he portrayed objectively with symbolism the french sculptor auguste rodin influenced his new poems another poems french sculptor auguste rodin another figure that influenced him Rilke's most immediate and obvious influence has been upon diction and imagery says Auden W H Auden and now I'll introduce you about certain other works the notebooks of Malte Lawrence Brig and you know elegies and uh, notebooks of Malte Malte Lawrence Brig expresses the poet's growing doubts about whether anything existed that superior to mankind and his world so thinking about the religious um things of heaven and all he was in the doubt whether it existed anything superior to mankind god or uh, something like that and this in turn he brought into question his very reason for writing poetry he was searching the deeper meaning of life why people are living in this world why they are undergoing all those pressures he was searching the deeper meaning in life and he is really is bewildered about the things he couldn't find the correct answer do you know elegies is another work he is uh, it is a great it's a big greatest set of poems of modern times and he turns to his personal vision to find solutions to question about the purpose of human life again uh, searching for the purpose of human life and the poet's role in society and it took 10 years to complete this work do you know elegies it was a time of world war first so and uh, he stayed at duno castle on the italian coast and the work took 10 years to complete in another work in sonnets to orpheus he shows what poetry meant to him what he got from it and what he hoped for it uh this poem is not such a uh, dark tone dark in tone but the dominating mood is joy uh but in elegies we can see the distress and anxiety in his work elegies but in this work it is uh, the dominating mood is joy and it was inspired by french poets as paul valery and jean cocteau and uh, he suffered illness throughout his whole life in childhood also he was um in poor health and he died of leukemia in 1926 herman hesse the german author summed up his evolution as a poet in his book my belief essays on life and art 
He says that remarkable his life. This journey from the youthful music of Bohemian folk poetry, his unconventional folk poetry, to office. Remarkable how his mastery of form increases, penetrates deeper and deeper, profound thoughts into the problems, purpose of human life, meaninglessness of life, and each stage now and again the miracle occurs. His delicate, hesit hesit hesitant, anxiety-prone person withdraws, and through him resounds the music of the universe. That's what Herman Hesse told about Drillke. And when we come in to the poem, and we saw he found peace in his heart too. Art is the redeemer of society. Coming towards the poem, the childhood. Childhood is included in the collection of poems Das Butch der Bilder, published in 1902. And the title of the volume translated as The Book of Images or Book of Pictures. We can see a lot of images in his poetry. And we can see the poem has a dark tone. Not something joyfulness, a dark, desolated sense. Loneliness as a theme of the poem, also the passage of time. And poem really leaves us disturbed, a disturbing mood. Because often he's talking about childhood and why it leaves us disturbed. Almost children have a good childhood or happy childhood. Maybe some instances to cherish upon. Not everything, but maybe some instances to cherish upon. But for him, it was really unpleasant. A nostalgic poem we are going to see now. It would be good to give much thought before you try to find words for something so lost. For those long childhood afternoons you knew that vanished so completely and why? We are still reminded and sometimes by a rain. But we can no longer say what it means. Life was never again so filled with meeting, with reunion and with passing on as back then. When nothing happened to us, except what happens to things and creatures, we lived their world as something human and became filled to the brim with figures and became so lonely as a shepherd and as overburdened by vast distances and summoned and stood as from, from far away and slowly like a long new thread introduced into that picture sequence where now having to go on bewilders us. It would be good to give much thought before you try to find words for something so lost. Narita had an unhappy childhood days. I told you, his father compelled him to attend a military boarding school, but he was not interested. He found it was so demanding, beyond his capacity, he had poor health. He also left the school prematurely and he was living in Prague where uh, people, children were speaking another language, Czech language, and he was born to a German-speaking parents. So generally then there arise a problem of communication too. So maybe he lacks friends there. And he was dissatisfied with, um, with his childhood. Further, his parents also, they entered their marital relationship. Parents got divorced. So these all things affected his unhappy childhood days. He lacks the love of father and mother. Maybe they'll be busy around their own um, personal life. When we go across these things, just think about your childhood. How was it about it? About all happy child, happy childhood? Maybe we get some instances, right? We have some instances in our life to cherish upon in our childhood. Meeting at least uh, two to three friends we'll be having. We'll be um, playing with the friends or with our parents, enjoying. And often it says, right, no? Childhood is the most beautiful time in our life, right? Without any burdens, without any difficulties to look upon. Yes, time has to move on, but... And he says that it would be good to give much thought before I'm going to speak about my childhood. I just want to think about my childhood. I just want to think about or find words for something which I lost. My childhood was lost for me. I didn't have any ple pleasant memories of my childhood. So I need to give much more thought to speak on that. For long childhood afternoons, he felt his childhood afternoons were so long and he says that it vanished so completely. Long childhood afternoons, the desolation, he felt loneliness. He didn't have a pleasant afternoon to recall or recollect. It was days of boring. 
may be the time the children people were speaking or the majority people were speaking shak and uh, maybe he didn't have any close relationship close friendship with someone so he doesn't have any words to describe about his childhood it vanished so completely that means the passage of time childhood it vanished so completely and why why is also used maybe speaking about his unclear thoughts why it is so vanished vanished so completely uh, time passes on right childhood was in desolation in loneliness without any good memories and it also vanished so completely time moves on the speed passage of time we are still reminded sometimes by a rain when a rain hap- when a rain just pours down he just reminded about his childhood afternoons but we can no longer say what it means but he don't have words to say about what the childhood means for him because he don't have any words to describe on pleasant words to describe on he can't recollect any such good memories these occasional rains really take him back to those childhood days and rain here acts as a catalyst that triggers the poet's memory too but he don't know he doesn't know to define those days he doesn't have anything to speak on those days and he says that no memories to cherish too life was never again so filled with meeting with reunion and with passing on as back then and he says that there were really he was meeting people right it was filled with meeting with reunion again reunion but with passing on as back then he met people but nobody influenced him nobody had a special influence in his life or an emotional attachment maybe he's speaking about and we saw a girl called salome had an influence in his life but uh, was a decisive influence in his life but nothing more a childhood friend or something got uh, much influenced in his life or any pleasurable moments he enjoyed in his childhood then life was never again so filled with meeting with reunion and with passing on as back then when nothing happened to us as childhood passes these children were growing up they were growing physically right what happens to things and creatures nothing happened to us except what happens to things and creatures that means as creatures grow he also grew up physically he grew up but without any uh, emotional attachments creatures doesn't have any don't have any emotional attachments or mental attachments with anything like that he also grew up without any attachments or emotional attachments we lived their world as something human we lived the adults world or that time 1900s or uh, 1880s or 1890s 1885 to 90s just lived the world as something human as something human not enjoying the whole benefits of being a human but less than that and became filled to the brim with figures lived the adults world as they say as something human without any um identity maybe and became filled to the brim with figures and he met many figures in his life he didn't f- see the people as such but he sees that um people came to his life just as figures meetings people but no special people in his childhood he was living childhood as yet another creature people came to his life as just figures nobody influenced him in his childhood maybe that's why he's saying that he had long childhood afternoons unhappy childhood right so all these three paragraphs it is a one single sentence such a big sentence right and towards the next paragraph we can see it starts with a simile figure of speech figure of speech that compares two things with like or as simile and became as lonely as a shepherd as he grew up or in the childhood itself he became as lonely as a shepherd with nobody to accompany and as overburdened by vast distances shepherd is overburdened by vast distances right an image image of a shepherd we get 
he has used me he uses number of images in his poems early we saw image of a rain now it is image of a shepherd and he became as lonely as a shepherd nobody to speak on like that and as overburdened by vast distances just as a shepherd is overburdened by vast distances in front of him he is also overburdened with this vast life in front of him he don't know he doesn't know where to move on where to proceed he just know he has a life in front of him but without any emotional attachments he has to move on his life without having nobody to stick to really heart touching right and became as lonely as a shepherd and as overburdened by vast distances and someone then stood as far from far away and like a shepherd is someone is from far away and slowly and he is also like a long new thread introduced into that picture sequence where now having to go on bewilders us and he got wondered he just confused in his life where this life is taking him to life has nothing to offer him he's like a long new thread all he have had some vast distances in a picture like that a long thread in which is just introduced into a picture sequence like that he also have had a vast distance in front of him life has nothing to offer him he's confused life ask him to move on but to where he has to live his life in loneliness is confused he knows he's part of a chain of existence he has to move on with his life whatever happens around see just connect with your life now we are all undergoing the situation of covid we are all what to say affected whole world is affected but we have to face this reality reality that man is nothing life is nothing life is meaningless people many people are dying around us right we are all part of this chain of existence we don't know where do this life taking us to and he says that what bewilders him that the power in the universe that asks him to move on again the pantheistic idea of god power in the universe that coaxes him to move on to where to move on to infinity that bewilders him all these traumas he undergone no childhood with pleasant memories and all nobody to take care of isolated desolation everything is there and now again that power in the universe that persuades him to move on maybe death is a far reality for him maybe that's why despite all the difficulties life has to move on right yeah in the last paragraph he feels like a lonely shepherd who is far away grazing his sheep and he has no companions to play with the talk with and talk and he sp- spent time in merry making the poet is bewildered at his uncertain future and is really bewildered about the speedy passage of time that it vanished so completely childhood afternoons vanished so completely he is also uncertain about his future as he grows up he is like a long thread into the picture sequence of life he doesn't know where to move on he has to face life with all its hard realities and complexities he doesn't know how to overcome these difficulties and problems of life he is really bewildered now he turns back his childhood days are completely disappeared at least he could, he cannot enjoy that fact or relish that fact that it is over now childhood is over now let's move on with a happy situation he cannot do that it's a paradox right is unable to enjoy that fact that is it is vanished forever now just move on no that gloom gloominess or uh, that um, that attitude or that um, gloomy attitude gloomy life period of childhood it got it effect its effect in his throughout his life it affected him a lot in his childhood nothing happened to us except nothing ha- happened to them except to what happens to things and beings they just grew up like that he also grew up and he lived their world as something human and in that life he saw many figures not the actual people and we saw a simile of shepherd 
image of a shepherd overlooking his flock across the vastness as he summoned and stood from far away by the call of the infinite space world is mo- also moving in time overburdened by vast spaces and he's also asked to move on with overburdening of vast spaces we can see the passage of time to reference of time to right like afternoons vanished so completely passage of time speedy passage of time and towards the second paragraph last in sentence with passing on and on as back then again the passage of time then the picture sequence is through a thread connects the childhood state of nothing happened to the people but they just grew up and the bewildering present of having to go on childhood nothing happened just they grew up without any emotional attachments any pleasurable moments and towards the present is really confused bewildered where to move on childhood after that followed by rain and we get got the image of a shepherd who's overburdened by vast distances and we got the picture the transition from nothing happens to us except what happens to things and creatures in the childhood to a lonely shepherd and life is impelled by a someone from the infinite spaces life is calling him to move on to infinite spaces and we could see a passive childhood state of letting things happen they lived their their world we lived their world as something human and the poet moves on and he summoned by the call of the vast spaces ahead towards eternity and i told you there are only two sentences in the poem first one deals with the childhood where things happened as they would to other things and being a passive state of being second is a shorter one uh, dealing with the shepherd with vast distances before him stretching infinitely and the simile of the shepherd and also about the long thread then um, we got uh, seemingly it is a small poem but it got deeper thoughts no profound deep thoughts it has it has and andrew marvel's line a uh, quote also you can remember and can connect it with yonder before us lie vast deserts of eternity like the shepherd is overburdened by vast distances yonder before us lie vast deserts of eternity just remember this thing of this also just remember remember critic words and what is idea and his uh, um, and how that critic spoke about his poems rilke's poems and um, please go through the phrase long childhood afternoons because it was long boring isolated and all and uh, the figure of speech the simile is used and what bewilders the poet at the end of the poem because he knew he has to move on his life some power is dictating his destiny and it ask him to move on to infinity but to where he don't know he doesn't know is really bewildered the meaninglessness of life all the problems a, child, a person has to undergo and still the life asks them to move on to continue with the life that actually bewilders him so i think uh, and we got images of um long um, childhood afternoons no uh, image may be splashed into a mind and about rain and about um, shepherd all these things so go through all these things again and again read again and again and um, we will meet with another poem in our next class